Are you a Christian woman in a painful and confusing marriage? Do you wonder if you're going crazy? My name is Natalie Hoffman. I'm the author of the book called, Is It Me? Making Sense of Your Confusing Marriage, a Christian woman's guide to hidden emotional and spiritual abuse. Today, I'm going to give you a little excerpt from the book to help you figure out if your Christian marriage is normal or emotionally abusive. We're going to start with a little story. She wondered if she was going crazy. All she ever wanted was to be a good wife and mom. And she gave her marriage and home all the love, energy, and support she had inside. But something was off in her marriage. No matter what she did or how hard she tried, she felt like a failure. They couldn't seem to resolve conflict unless she took full responsibility for everything, including what her husband did, and beg forgiveness for implying that he might have ever done anything wrong. But wasn't she supposed to be humble and give up her rights? Oh, sometimes things seemed fine. They could be okay for days, sometimes weeks, but then things would begin to fall apart, usually after she had to ask for help or if she gave him feedback about something that she felt was important. This seemed to upset him and turn everything upside down again. But didn't all marriages have their ups and downs? She learned how to pick her battles carefully because once he was upset, she had to endure a tirade of accusations and condemnation, the silent treatment, no favors or help for a while. She felt bad if she wanted to go out with a friend. He would say little things that made her feel guilty for abandoning her family and forcing him to take care of the kids. But wasn't she supposed to lay down her life and serve her husband and family? Sex was horrible. She couldn't have an orgasm, even though she read books about it and prayed for help. She couldn't relax. He made little comments about her body and her behavior in bed, and she felt ashamed and stupid. When they had sex, he did it and got it over with, and she wanted him to. It felt impersonal and disgusting. He complained about her inability to get into it. There was no emotional connection. What was wrong with her? The burden of parenting alone most of the time was starting to break her down, too. She was getting short with the kids, exhausted, burnt out. When he would start in on her, she'd fight back now, saying sarcastic things that she regretted later. He would point out what an angry, bitter woman she was. He would tell her that she was unforgiving and disrespectful. He would tell her that everyone agreed with him. She had problems. She began to hate herself. He was a good man. He was faithful to her. He took the family to church. He read his Bible every day. In fact, He knew the Bible so well, he could pull out Bible verses to support his various observations of how bad she was. She would weep in church when they sang songs about the grace of God. She wanted to feel that grace so badly, but most of the time, all she felt was the condemnation of her husband and God too, because didn't he speak through the authorities in her life, like her husband and church elders? She was pretty sure God was disappointed in her failed efforts at creating a happy, peaceful home for her husband and children. She often locked herself in the bathroom, crying in hopeless desperation on the floor, begging God to help her be a better woman, begging God to forgive her, begging God for some reason to keep trying. What happened to the woman she used to be before she got married? She couldn't remember. Her small group leader at church told her that marriage would bring out the ugliness hidden inside of her. So anything good she was before must not have been real. All along, she must have always been an ugly, stupid, angry failure of a woman. Her marriage just brought that out. And she must be the kind of woman who couldn't get her act together. She wanted to die. So how do you know if your relationship is normal or abusive? Is there an imbalance of control in your relationship where your partner erases you or treats you as less than he is? 
Does your partner withhold communication and affection in order to control your emotions and decisions? Does your partner refuse to take responsibility for his actions and attitudes in your relationship by shifting the blame or denying what he does or just justifying what he does or minimizing his behavior? Does your partner use deception to control you? This would include things like gaslighting, which is saying things didn't happen when they did or things did happen when they didn't, or withholding information from you, or mixing truth with a little lie, or creating doubt and confusion in you? Does your partner use verbal bully tactics to shame, intimidate, and destroy your self-worth? Does your partner isolate you by withholding finances? This is called financial abuse or keeping you from building relationships with other people outside of your immediate family or controlling when and how those relationships operate. Does your partner disrespect your boundaries? Are you allowed to say stop or no without suffering emotional and verbal consequences? Does your partner overvalue his contributions while undervaluing yours? Does your partner tell you how you think and feel instead of allowing you to decide how you think and feel for yourself? Are there certain topics in your relationship that are off limits? Does conflict get swept under the rug, never to be resolved? Does your partner give orders or manipulate things to go his way? Is trying to solve your partner's problems and manage his emotions all you can think about? Do they steal your attention from everything and everyone else, including God, so that your focus is constantly on them? Are they the center of your confusing and painful world? Do you have a desperate sense of having died somewhere deep inside of yourself? I believe that emotional abuse is an epidemic in many religious circles. When an abusive spouse uses the Bible or the concept of God to back up their abuse or justify their abuse, they are being spiritually abusive. And when churches and church leaders use the Bible to support the abuser and they come against the abuse target by pressuring her to reconcile, they are also behaving emotionally and spiritually in an emotional and spiritually abusive way. Emotional abuse is an epidemic in conservative Christian circles where there is a built-in belief system that says men are supposed, are supposed to be in a power over position related to women. For some men who respect and honor women, and in particular their wives, these beliefs these that undergird their theology don't necessarily have a direct impact on their marriages on a practical level. However, for the rest of the population, this erroneous belief feeds into these underlying attitudes, as well as subtle and not so subtle behaviors of men toward women. The practical outcome of such attitudes and behaviors is the destruction of women and children from the inside out. Emotional abuse is particularly rampant because it flies under the radar and it's so difficult to prove. Women in emotionally abusive relationships can be significantly affected by a simple glance or gesture or even a slight change in the tone of voice of her abuser, things that would never be noticed by anyone standing near. Even if you did point it out, others would not believe it was abusive because they don't have know the inside chronic history of the couple. And that is why when Christian women do come forward to disclose emotional abuse, they are most often not understood or believed. All their husband has to do is present his innocent side of the story, which discounts the woman's experience and feelings, and the church leaders and others will dismiss her story as a hysterical, ungrateful wife's dripping, complaining spirit. Surely it is she who is the real problem in such a marriage. And of course, the abuser enthusiastically agrees. And so the hidden abuse continues unchecked until the woman finally gets to the place where she is falling apart physically. Emotional abuse targets, if 
not treated. Um, I'm, yes, I'm sorry. Emotional abuse targets that, that meaning the woman, if they're not treated, they will eventually present with physical ailments. And some of these physical ailments can include heart palpitations, panic attacks, gastrointestinal issues, anxiety disorders, depression, self-harming behaviors, migraines, chronic fatigue syndrome, autoimmune disorders, thyroid disease, and other hormone imbalances. Emotional abuse is physical abuse of a genius and covert kind. It has been the most prevalent attack on the female gender throughout history, and it is supported and encouraged in our churches all across the world in the name of God. What a tragic twisting of scripture. What a slap in the face of Jesus Christ, who modeled true love and respect for both men and women equally. In Galatians 3.28, it says, there is no longer Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male or female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. So what can you do about it? If this doesn't sound like your marriage, great. You're fortunate to have met and married a good partner. Many people marry in their 20s before they've had a lot of life experience. It's a gamble in many ways. Abusive partners do not present as abusers in the beginning. Now, there are several red flags to look for, and I've talked about that in another video, but many young people have no idea that these signs should be taken as serious. Emotions have a way of getting in the way of reason. Here's what you can do though. You can bookmark videos like this and websites like mine, flyingfreenow.com, in case that you suspect a friend or family member might be experiencing these things in their marriage, and you can share them at an appropriate time. You can also educate yourself on what emotional abuse actually is. I estimate that for every five couples in your church, at least two of them are, in, are emotionally abusive. And I think that's actually a conservative estimate. So be ready to help them with support, information, and most importantly, validation. These people are not lying. They're often scared to death to tell someone for many reasons, and they've got a long journey ahead of them. They really could use someone in their corner. But what if you are in an emotionally abusive relationship? What can you do? Here are some ideas. First of all, you can learn about the abuse cycle and how your relationship fits into that pattern. There are many articles out there ready to help you figure this thing out. Knowledge is power and much of it is free on the internet. I have a podcast, Flying Free Podcast, that has over, at, at the time of this video, over 170 episodes in it that will educate you on emotional abuse. Another thing you can do is begin interacting with fellow survivors who are just a little bit ahead of you on the journey. They will be your greatest cheerleaders on the way because they've been where you are. They know the pitfalls that you're coming up against that you're going to face in the near future. You know, those wagon masters on the Oregon trail that, that they would, they traveled on the Oregon trail to Oregon. And then they came back and got more people and said, come on, I've been on this trail. I know what it's like hop in the wagon and I can take you. All right. Well, these women are like that. They're coming. They've walked the journey already. And they're coming back now to walk alongside you, to answer your questions, to bind up your wounds. Another thing you'll need to do is start detoxing from the false teachings about men and women and gender hierarchy. These beliefs are based on agenda driven propaganda that is actually taught in our seminaries. They are not love-based Christ honoring or building to either men or women as a whole. There is so much to study here. It may take some serious rewiring of your brain to start seeing things clearly. It is a lot like deprogramming from a cult. And then finally, if you're not on my mailing list yet, why not hop on? I have got a uh, a fr you can get a f the, f the first chapter of my book. Is it me making sense of your confusing marriage free? 
along with the first chapter of the companion workbook. All you have to do is go to my website, website flyingfreenow.com and a little pop-up box will appear and give you an opportunity to tell me where I can send you the free chapters. I also have a healing membership program called Flying Free that will change your life and jumpstart your progress. The women in that community are incredible. You are not alone. Emotional abuse survivors are some of the most empathic, honest, hardworking, intelligent, problem-solving, persevering, responsibility takers on the planet. And I've worked with thousands of them, including doctors, business owners, teachers, and nurses. Abusers often select warm, flexible, shining stars to eventually control and suck dry. Remember the woman at the beginning of the, this video in the story, she went through some grueling steps, but she got out and now she is strong and coming into her own. What about you? Until next time, fly free.